Hi, I'm Engineer Bill. A lot of people have asked me to show some projects that I'm doing on the boat. Uh, I'll do that once in a while, and this is once in a while. Today, I am going to put some kind of cover on this, which I don't have. A lot of boats, the ladder up to the flybridge will have a hinged top. Sometimes they have a different method. I can't do a hinged top because I have these things in the way. But I'll use a Lexan cover that can thick enough that, to support my weight. And what I'll do is I'll just let it float on top, so to speak, and I'll put some spacers underneath to keep it in position on this portion. And then I'll have two little uh, dogs, so to speak, uh, to close it. And I think that's what I'll do it. And when I want to take it off, I'll just remove it. No hinge, of course. And then I'll hang it over here. So I'm taking some measurements. I'm going to look at what size and requirements I need. Uh, have I ever fallen through this hole before? No, I did step my foot in it uh, and I caught myself. But we use this area a lot and we walk around it a lot. Uh, it's really a, a safety issue and I want it clear with Lexan because when I back up the boat I want to be able to see through to the, to the back end of the boat over here. So why don't we go back in the shop where it's a lot cooler and less sunny and let me get started on fabricating something. There's all kinds of different clear materials I, I could have bought. Lexan to me was the best choice because it doesn't yellow with sun beating on it uh, too fast and it's a little bit more scratch resistance than some of the other plastic materials that I could have used. Some of the problems I did have in purchasing this was the size requirements. I have a list over here of the size I wanted and this comes out to two feet and I wanted two inches extra than this two feet so this is just barely going to do it. I didn't get the bigger piece because I'd have to go, you, you can't get a custom piece very easily without paying through the nose for it and the next size up was a full size instead of two feet, four feet and that would have cost an arm and a leg, this already cost an arm and a leg. I could get it long enough where I needed but so I decided I'll just take the hit this is only from the inside diameter that I need this is only a half inch or a quarter inch wider on each side to cover what I needed if I need more I decided I'll, I'll, I'll put on another strip material on the side of course it won't be wood and so I want to machine some inserts like in the corners so that it fits snugly on the inside and that gives me a place to put the rotating little arms so I can lock it into place. And that's all I want to do. If I want to take it off, I need to put some handles on here somewhere. I guess I can buy something stainless steel, but I do have something custom in mind. I don't know what I'm going to do about that yet. Maybe I do have aluminum tubing. Maybe I can bend it myself and make my own handles. I want it to be rather long so I can pick it up and put it aside or at least pick it up from the top underneath I guess there should be handles underneath too I could make the handles out of the starboard material but that's uh, and I might do that so let me get started I'm cutting the holes for the countersink and the through hole for the screws that's going to hold on to the side of the uh, Lexan. First thing I'll do is I'll put on this little device and this is my edge finder. And when I put on here I find the very edge over here to within uh, one or two thousandths of an inch.
and then I can use my digital readout to push it over to a quarter of an inch which is right in the middle since this, since this is a half inch thick piece. Then I use my centering bit, even though this is, this is plastic, I use a centering bit to make sure that my drill bit doesn't walk around at all. Especially with this kind of material, it's, it's very soft. It's very easy for the bit just to hog its way in there and, and dig right in and then go where it wants to go, almost. So I still use this, I just touch it a little bit, just give it a mark. So I'll drill that hole out and then I'll go down with this end mill. Let me show you the screw that I'm using. It's, it's of course stainless steel, it's going to be on the boat, 316 stainless steel. But since I'm dealing with plastic, like you can see right here, I'm using a socket head cap screw, but I have a stainless steel washer that goes on top of it and it spreads the load out a little bit wider. If it was just steel, I probably wouldn't bother. But for plastic, I put an extra uh, area of loading. So in order to do that, I need to have an end mill that's the size of the little washer size up my block gauge and make sure I'm getting the depth I want which is halfway down through there and more important than just getting it precisely halfway down there is to make sure I have the same depth all the way across now I don't go drill this and then go right over here and drill this because this is a flex too much I need it to be right over here so I'll drill that one come over here and make sure it's very level and then I'll drill it over here close to its support structure. So when I'm done with that, then I'll use this as my guide to mark exactly where I'm going to position the screws on the Lexan. And the screws need to be straight in the x-axis and the y-axis, actually 316 degree, 360 degree axis. It needs to be perfectly straight. And there's no way I can do that by hand. So what I've done is I've made a little gauge with poplar. I cut a slot that's exactly half inch, the thickness of this, and the hole that's drilled exactly to the hole that I need to drill for the tap drilling. And in order for me to line it up, I have a little light over here that's going right against my mark and I can see it through the hole. So that's perfectly aligned. I just take my drill bit and go right through. I go a little at a time and I take off the shavings. One of the dangers is working with this Lexan. It's not really a danger, but uh, this bit heats up a lot because the Lexan collapses in on the bit after it's cut. Steel and metal does that too, to a certain extent, but this does a little bit more. So, and just that little bit, I can touch it and it's pretty hot. I have a little bit of water right here. I douse it with a little water, cool it down. And I go down, I take another little cut and I bring it up, clear it out. And I just go very slowly. If I go too fast or I rush this process, then it's going to start to melt the plastic. Don't want that. A little bit at a time, clean it off. Yeah, that's really hot now. It melts really easy. But just a little cool. It's, it's perfectly cool now, just a little bit of water. Now I have a mark over here as to how far I want to go down. Okay, when I was designing what size holes and taps, the, the largest size I really wanted to go is 832 tap. So 
So this, I don't mind going in by hand, put a little water in there, because it already guides me. I just go slow. But the same thing, I'll go down a little bit, keep it cool, go down some more. I always put one of my screws in to make sure it goes down deep enough. Since it's a blind hole, a lot of the debris will fall down to the bottom and heat makes it warm back up a little bit so it kind of sticks down to the bottom. You can't blow it out with an air gun, uh, not very easily. So I just drilled deep enough to compensate for the little compression of extra cutting debris from the bit. As long as they're all the same size because these will be exposed to the boat, especially when I take off this little, uh, this little protective film, and it'll, it'll look a whole lot better if they're all the same size, all the same distance apart. That's what I'm doing. Next thing I should start on is my little corners that will hold this on the inside of the opening. So let me figure out how I'm going to do that. I'm going to have my 3D printer make up four extensions that will keep the Lexan plate centered. I'm going to make up four extensions that I can attach to the Lexan that hang down into the slot on each corner to keep the Lexan centered. I will model these extensions individually on my CAD program. Then I'll move the model over to my 3D printer program which will decide how to actually build it. And then off to the 3D printer. Next is the handle, underneath handle, and the latching assembly. I'm just cutting off some aluminum tubing to use as the actual handle. I'll actually locate and attach these little assemblies on the boat. And for now, I'll just go to the edging border and finish that up. Okay, I finished up the sides. I could have used more screws, but because this is such a flexible material, the, these uh, UHMW sides, but you know, they'll be fine. What I'm doing now is I'm putting a chamfer on this, the edges. I don't walk into this cover this way or this way very much on the boat, but I will be walking this way and this way, and I want to eliminate at least some of the hazards. This is a half inch step up. So I'm just gonna put a chamfer on here and maybe that'll help a little bit. All right, it looks like it's getting ready to rain again. I just got this all secured and I'm standing on it. This is exactly what I wanted. I didn't put on any outside handles because I think I can grab it well enough on the outside and any handles would be a trip hazard. So we're gonna hold off on that a little bit. But this is what it looks like, it's all clear. These are all screwed on. One thing I would like to point out is one of the tools I made with my 3D printer in order to get the chamfer for the screws to be just right. I have a chamfering bit that I stuck inside a stop that was made on my 3D printer so I can get the exact depth. All right, this is what I'm talking about. I just put four stops in each corner to keep it stationary and then these are the the flappers or the dogs and you can bend these and that locks it down so it doesn't fly away that's all there is to it <laughs> no <laughs> yep <laughs> that's for a video so i can synchronize the voice and the and the video